Hey guys, my name is Shai and I'm doing another Starseed reading today. Before I get started, I just want to let you know that if I seem a little um, out of it or a little weird right now, um, I am. I'm having, you know, a lot of ascension symptoms today, but I wanted to do this reading anyway uh, for a few reasons. First of all, I know that everybody is kind of feeling, <laughs> you know, the ascens ascension symptoms, really feeling them all year. We're, we're all in this, right? Experiencing it differently, perhaps, but we're all kind of going through the same general thing. So I knew you guys would kind of get it and you're very possibly experiencing very similar things to me at whatever time you are viewing this. Typically, that's how it works, right? I'm experiencing something. You're experiencing something very similar. There we go. Um, Second of all, the kind of trigger for today's batch of ascension symptoms is directly related to this reading. So before I get to the cards, um, basically I'm doing this because last night, um, you know, I hadn't actually meditated in a while um, because probably a few weeks because I've been having so many other things to integrate, so many different things coming through and for me, if I'm meditating too much, that actually is like ungrounding for me. It takes me out of my body. So I was kind of avoiding meditating because I just felt like there was just too much to digest and I was just sleeping a lot and just taking it easy, you know. Um, but, you know, then I got that feeling like, okay, I really I have to go sit down and meditate like right now. I, I you know, got the sense that some some being wanted to communicate. So you know, off I go. And <laughs> sure enough, um, I felt... Um, connected to the blue flame beings and I've felt them come through before and I always see blue <laughs> literally see blue and sometimes I see a blue face or a blue eye and and their energy that I can feel it around me it's a very specific um I wish I could share something specific with you about the blue flame beings and, and who they are you know beyond what you can just kind of google but I don't really know. I don't really know much because I don't connect with them very often. But when I do, it is always like seriously big shifts. Like they don't connect, at least with me, they don't connect with me just to say hi. They connect with me to bring in a like crap load of energy. It is always a massive activation. Um, and the other beings that came through were, um, I saw white and that was new to me. I'd never seen white before. Like I don't see things very clearly, <laughs> but I do often see like colors. So this white, um, just this white impression on, you know, my visual field was new. So I asked them, um, you know, who are you? <laughs> and their, their energy was, it felt kind of lighter and maybe higher in frequency, like fluffier, lighter, um, just less dense than the blue flame beings. And they called themselves the, white light beings i don't know anything about that or who they are or anything <laughs> um that's just what that's just what i experienced so i'm just going to share it just as it is and that's basically that's basically that but i felt some specific messages come through besides just feeling their energy um the first thing was that they wanted to both of these different groups they wanted to remind us that we can be entirely independent. There is not a single thing that we can't do for ourselves or give to ourselves. If you are asking um, for something or you have some kind of problem and you can't figure out how to solve it, this was just a reminder, you know, from them to us that you don't actually need external help. You, you can figure it out for yourself. Even if it seems like something that is too large for you to handle, it's actually totally within <laughs> the... the realm of possibility for you to handle on your own. Uh, also, but that being said, um, the second part of the, that message was, but, you know, don't forget when it is more fun to work with other people when it is more fun to co-create just because you can do everything for yourself and you can give yourself whatever you need or want or desire you don't have to do it all the time you can totally you know co-create with other people on earth or with other inter interdimensional beings with whoever you want um but you should be doing that not out of you know all of us this is a message for me too not 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 for you <laughs> not just for you for me as well you know it, we don't need to co-create or work together with other beings out of a sense of neediness or 
feeling like they can do something that we can't. It it should just be like a fun thing. It's just fun to connect and you connect with other beings just to do things together, just out of the sheer joy of it. Um, that So that was that. That was what I got <laughs> um, last night from these beings. And that's connected to this reading because right away I knew that I wanted to do this reading the next day. It's been an hour. I've kind of, or it's been a whole day <laughs> since then. And I've kind of been digesting these energies. And, you know, I'm right now, you know, I'm really like hot and cold. I feel like I have a fever, but I don't. You know, pins and needles over my body, lots of shivers, kind of have getting a sore throat, um, you know, third eye headache, the whole nine yards. Uh, so I'm trying to keep my focus here, but I, I'm going to be less articulate than usual, I am afraid. But uh, basically, here you go. This is the package of energy that I downloaded from those two different collectives yesterday. And now you guys, if you would like to receive that energy as well, all you got to do is, you know, give the universe a little telepathic yes. And here you go. <laughs> Here's the, the energy transmission. And that's really the most important thing um, of this video, just to give you guys a chance to, you know, just to give us all a chance to kind of pass our energy around, and that's basically it. But, you know, I laid out a Celtic cross uh, just to see what's going on, and I am using this Murder of Crows tarot because it is so, like, scorpionic. This, this deck is so Scorpio to me, and I'm feeling particularly plutonian right now so this is this is what we're what we're going with and it was funny as soon as they laid out the cards of course it's very interestingly connected to kind of the experience i had last night um connecting with those beings because right uh the center issue is temperance and it is being crossed by the three of pentacles so <laughs> we are working on integrating a massive amount of energy and it is coming in from all angles trying to temper all of the different elements all of the different elements you can think of that literally if you're into you know elemental magic or just the different aspects of your life the different facets of your personality of your consciousness working on pulling that all together and becoming a sovereign source and yet this experience this totally independent sovereign confident experience is being crossed by the three of pentacles that teamwork energy that doing everything in co-creation but in a very kind of down to earth way a grounded way a deliberate way i always just think of you know three people like landscaping together or something with the three of pentacles and this one is actually some guy in a plague mask um he seems to be working on some kind of crow totem um so there's some kind of conflict going on between our ability to fully embody our sovereign energy and our confidence in doing whatever we want to do for our own selves. And I think, I think everybody tuning into this video is going to have something, uh, some specific issue that they have been trying to solve or trying, or some kind of hurdle they're trying to overcome. But maybe you haven't quite been able to figure out how to do that. So you keep asking for help either from people you know or just asking the universe for help but yet nothing has really been figured out um i know that i for me i have a like this irritating pain that i've had for years and i haven't been able to get rid of it i know that it's not anything medically like it's not a medical problem like doctors can't help me um and i but i've you know been to energy healers i've tried all kinds of different stuff like that, working on my chakras. I've tried everything I could think of and nothing, <laughs> nothing seems to help. I can't, I can't seem to solve this problem. And I've been asked, finally been asking, you know, just asking the like universe, can you send me some help to like fix this pain? I'm tired of living with this pain, like almost every day, right? It's getting ridiculous. And I had to laugh because right away after I asked, like I literally was sitting in bed and I was like, Hey universe, can you send me some help? And then um, I got an, an email popped up and for a minute it was like an advertisement to like a like spiritual course. And for a second I was like, ah, wow, that worked really fast. Like there's my help. But then I, I as soon as I looked at it, I was like, no, this, that's not it. That's not, that's not for me. This isn't resonant for me. And I was like, why did it send, why did the universe send me 
this thing that looked like the solution but ended up being absolutely not. And I was like, okay, well, wait, there's a lesson here. The lesson is that, um, I mean, I can keep asking for help and I can keep trying to solve this problem by receiving help from others. But apparently, on some level, I really want to learn this lesson for myself. This is something that I'm supposed to learn to do for myself. So maybe you guys have something like that going on where you're looking for help outside of yourself, but really this is a problem you have to solve on your own. And you've actually, you know, designed that for yourself. There's a reason for this. And one day we will be able to look back and understand what's going on here, what this lesson is. But yeah, so whatever that is for you, maybe we need to back off of asking for help on this. Or maybe instead of asking for the solution, we need to be asking for the knowledge or understanding or wisdom that we need in order to solve the problem ourselves, right? We need to learn. We can ask for the learning so that we can solve our problem rather than asking just directly for a solution. So... Yeah, and funnily enough, um, the outcome card is the Three of Cups, which I'll talk more about at the very end, but that to me talks exactly about that message I received yesterday about, you know, being able to move fluidly from being completely independent and completely sovereign and choosing to co-create just out of love, just out of it being fun and being um, a connective experience. Is connective? Is that a word? Yeah, it is. It is a word. Okay. <laughs> Um, and I think that three of cups energy is going to be a lot healthier for us and more enjoyable for us than the three of pentacles energy, because the three of pentacles is like teaming up somebody to get a job done. It's like a coworker energy, the three of cups, that is your soul family energy. So yeah, we want to be connecting with other people and other beings, not just to get a problem solved and not just for work, but out of love. We want to be connecting out of love. And I think that's, <laughs> that's the gist, um, of this message. And let's see. Down at the bottom here, we have the three of swords. In our recent past, it's the star. And in our near future, the eight of swords. This three of swords in kind of deep past. That's how I typically kind of vibe on this bottom card. To me, this makes me think of past life trauma. And I've probably been talking that about that a lot lately. I think that I just really think that's such a massive theme for the whole year. <laughs> and I, I know I've been having a lot of dreams just over and over and over of weird, weird stuff that happened to me in my past life. So The fact that we're working so much on healing past life traumas and issues and, you know, parallel lives and kind of working on all of our lives simultaneously, all of our parallel lives coming together um, into this great network. Um, that's really part of, you know, the ascension, right? Because we're raising our frequency and we're networking with ourselves through all of our different lifetimes. And so we need to heal not just what happened has happened to us in this lifetime, not just what has happened to us in like our linear past lives, but all of the crazy network of all of our conceivable lifetimes because we're, we're getting to the level where we're really connecting with that. And it really reminds me of before, like two years, I think, before I woke up, but it was like the prelude to my awakening because I started to feel like I was connecting with like alternate versions of myself. I got really into Rick and Morty. If you guys know that, that TV show, <laughs> um, re really good show, re really awesome. And, you know, they're always like changing dimensions into parallel, you know, dimensions, dimensions in that show are like an alternate version of, you know, earth or the universe or, or whatever, but in the same like time, uh, they don't, they don't do time travel, but they go to, go to like an al alternative, you know, parallel universe. And, you know, so there's like, infinite numbers of like Ricks and Mortys and they see them all. And it's, um, you know, it's, it's funny if you guys haven't seen it. It, it I love that show. It's amazing. <laughs> but after watching that show, I started to be, I just started to feel like I could 
communicate somehow with my parallel selves. And it was funny because at the time I was an atheist and I didn't believe in any of this, but it just, I was just having these moments where I almost felt like I could just look to the side and like see the cascading, um, you know, versions of myself stretching out into infinity. And I don't remember how that was related to this, but I think I was just on a tangent about how we are connecting with the greater network of ourselves, like getting all of ourselves together, getting them all connected, getting them all in one place. And we're, we're, it's, it's a massive expansion, not just an ascension. It is a massive like reconnection and re-expansion with far flung aspects of ourselves. And the recent past for it to be the star, um, when I'm looking at that, I just keep thinking about like receiving downloads, receiving communication. That's not typically how I would interpret the star, but it's really making me think that that's really what's coming into my head. So I think we have all been, <laughs> I mean, don't even really need a tarot card to, to, to uh, bring that up, right? We have all been receiving so much energy. And I think actually that... Oh, now I remember. Now I remember. There was a, something else I was going to say when I was talking about the blue flame beings and the white light beings that I connected with yesterday. I had another thing I was going to say, but I totally forgot what it was. So I just let it go and knew it was going to come back when it was important. And that's what this is about. Now I understand. Okay. <laughs> um, from this point on, whenever you see this video over the next few months, uh, I think we are all going to be having the opportunity for more more contact, basically. For some of us, that could be literal ET, physical contact. Um, for others, uh, others of us, that is getting more connected with, um, you know, higher dimensional beings, ones we haven't connected with before, or just having much more tangible, you know, contact, more satisfying communication, you know, having it more, more the way we want, right? We always want to connect more obviously, more viscerally, more tangibly. And I think that is just I mean, that's inevitable, right? Throughout our lives, it's just going to increase more and more and more. And eventually, you know, we're all going to have memories of going up to the spaceships and, uh, and, you know, be able to remember that. I know I've, uh, I've gone up to the ships, um, at a couple of times that I don't, I only have like a microsecond of one memory. <laughs> so I know it's happened, but I don't remember it yet. But this is just kind of a, I guess, an isolated message that, going to be a lot more opportunities for more connection coming up in our near future from whatever the time is that you're watching this. And yeah, in our near future, um, eight of swords. I just heard um, getting free of the puppet strings, getting free of the, the puppeteer strings. Um, this person on this particular Eight of Swords, there's not really, you know, the swords surrounding them, but there's all these cords, all of these cords binding them down. And I think we're going to be freeing ourselves from those cords, freeing ourselves from the cords that we've tied to ourselves, really. I've been thinking a lot lately about how... You know, we can sit around and feel sorry for ourselves about all of the difficult experiences we've had, about all the problems that we have, about all the challenges that we face. But, you know, I just keep re like reminding myself that, well, I, I designed this experience. You know, I co-created this experience. I'm co-creating it every day. You know, before I incarnated here, before I ever came to Earth, I put all these obstacles in my way and I knew that all these things were, you know, going to happen to be more or less, right? <laughs> and um, it really puts our obstacles in a different perspective once you really really like really um viscerally experience the knowing that you have created this game for yourself and you have created it to be difficult and you caused all these problems for yourself um um and but it becomes also more of a game like untying all those knots that you've tied for yourself it's like 
You know, when I was a kid, actually, I had a really, I had a thing for knots and string. I actually had a big bucket of different types of string and scarves and just anything long, right? And I would just tie everything up in knots. I would tie the furniture up in knots, literally. And like when I was a baby, my mom would just dangle a shoelace from, like she put me, put me on the table and dangle a shoelace and I'd just play with it and tie it up in knots. And literally I would tie the furniture up in knots, just everything. I was always tying knots and untying knots. And to this day, if anybody has a knot, they know to come to me because I can untie it. <laughs> and because it's it's just like a game. It's a game to me. And I think we we can start to see our lives that way going okay I tied all of these knots I, I tied my energy body up in these knots I put all of these blocks and this garbage up in my chakras and you know but now I'm going to clear them out and I caused all these problems for myself but now I'm going to untie those problems we're freeing ourselves from the problems that we put ourselves in um, and once we can see that as more of a game it not only is it more interesting and more fun but you can just uh, you know we can take a step back and just experience this whole simulation as something that, you know, doesn't have to be so serious all the time. <sighs> so, I like where that's going. And meanwhile, we are sitting pretty in this Empress energy. This is, you know, ourselves. This is us. This is our energy. <laughs> Very nice feeling completely sovereign. So this, uh, you know, temperance. We're so, you know, a temperance card at the beginning now this empress empress card stepping fully into our power and um you know what she's actually got something highlighting her throat here it, you know she's all her throat is all black or um in shadow but there's a white like little rectangle there right on her throat um, which is another thing is um, the third thing <laughs> um, that I received yesterday from those two collectives was that, you know, this is just another time of throat chakra activation, which um, I think, you know, there's been so much of that, a uh, little bit of repeating myself, um, I think, but there you go. So um, with that, once you find yourself embodying the empress energy what are you going to do with it you know what am i going to do with it <laughs> what are we going to do with it i feel like at some point star seeds all are going to end up speaking out i'm going to use the words speaking out but it doesn't necessarily have to be speaking right it is putting our energy out doesn't have to be through words at all or using your voice at all but just to use the word speaking you know to share to put out there put your energy out there because once we get into this empress energy you know we can just sit on that and stew on that but that's not really what we came here to do at some point we need to find some way to put our energy out there because that ripples out through the whole collective and that is why we came here we literally came here to be a little bit ahead of the curve um you know to go through the, some experiences in isolation and then to put that energy out there and make it easier for everybody else to, you know, raise their frequency. So a little bit of reminder there of, you know, once you are in, you know, work on yourself first, but once you are getting into a place like the Empress energy, what are you going to do with it? What, where are you going to go from there? How are you going to ripple your energy out? Because other people can definitely benefit from us. <laughs> and look at this, our external environment is the world look at this look at this empress of the world that's <laughs> that's you you are the empress or the emperor if you prefer you are the ruler of the world not that you are here to rule or that you even want to rule i don't think any of you <laughs> any of you have any interest at all of ruling um but it's not about that it's that you know the archetype of the ruler sure back in human history was about you know controlling and directing and you know ruling but i think that archetype going forward it's not about controlling anybody um or ruling over anybody it is um that energy of being sovereign you know that's why they call rulers sovereigns right the energy of being sovereign and using that to help um like inspire and empower people so how are you going to inspire and empower the world? You can embody that uh, energy of a ruler 
of a ruling power of a sovereign power, but don't, you don't, you know, going forward, we're not going to be acting as any kind of authority, just as a focal point of energy that we can, um, use to, I don't have any new words. I have to repeat myself <laughs> to inspire and empower others. My, uh, Between my third eye headache, my sore throat, my shivers, um, and my general feeling of having a fever, I'm just, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have any creative um, word power <laughs> today. So moving on, the uh, hopes and fears. <laughs> yeah, look at this. Hopes and fears, queen of pentacles. <laughs> so yeah, we are, we know that we have this power um, to be an inspiring sovereign energy. Um, and we know that that is part of our blueprint. We know that's why we came here, but we are a little bit afraid of it. We're afraid actually of our power. We are afraid of stepping into our power. Um, this is something I've been thinking about a lot lately about how, and I actually noticed this like years and years and years ago, but I couldn't quite, I had no way to articulate it. Um, but so this is the thing I've been thinking about for a really long time, essentially. One of the biggest issues that we face, and this is everybody, this isn't just starseeds, but I think it was particularly pertinent for us, um, at least at this point in time, is that we are deep, 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 deep down, no matter how shitty your life has been and no, how to, how, no matter how downtrodden you were, you always knew on some deep, <laughs> deep level that you were this unstoppable power and that you somehow like we're supposed to be powerful, but that you just, obviously that didn't make any sense with, you know, your place in the world. It just didn't make any sense. Um, and I think that feeling of knowing that you're supposed to be powerful, knowing that you are powerful and knowing that you're supposed to be experiencing your power, but never seeing that reflected in the world was like so frustrating, like frustrating on a cosmic level, frustrating to the point where you almost couldn't function. I think that that disconnect between knowing your power and just seeing no evidence of it in the, in the physical reality is massively traumatic, like, and crippling. It gives us so many problems. Um, because what's an example? How can I make, how can I make myself make sense? Um, I used to always say, and this is long before I believed in past lives. Okay. I used to always say, you know, I feel like in another life, I must have been a witch because if I were a witch, I feel like I could be a lot happier and that I could actually fit in with society better and I could actually help people more because if I were like a medieval witch, then I could, I wouldn't have to live in the village. I wouldn't have to live with all the people. I could go, you know, a mile outside of the village and like live in a little hut in the woods all by myself and I could go out there and I could, you know, be in nature and I could, you know, collect my herbs and work my witchcraft and do all that all by myself. But I would still, even though I could be, you know, away from everybody um, and I could be myself essentially, but I would still have a place in the village, you know, in the society because I, I would have, you know, knowledge um, to help people, you know, um, you know, the way, you know, wise women and which is, and, you know, that kind of archetype in all kinds of cultures has always, you know, traditionally, you know, been the keeper of knowledge, have been, you know, leading people in, you know, religious rites or, you know, being a healer, all those types of things. I always felt that if I could live like that, then my life would have been easier because there would have been a place for me because <laughs> I always knew just like, I know you guys always knew that you were just so different that you couldn't, you know, couldn't ever fit in. Um, but in our, you know, modern day Western culture, there isn't an, there isn't like an archetype like that. Not, not one that's broadly socially accepted, right? You end up being a fringe dweller and there's no like place for the fringe dwellers to, there's no way for us to be incorporated into the mainstream. And yeah, so, you know, long before I believed in past lives, I just felt like I had this power within me to be some kind of witchy archetype, right? Some kind of sh like shaman archetype, something like that. Um, because I had, I just felt like I had that kind of potential or that kind of power, but there was just no mechanism for that to fit into my, my society. So 
basically, I think we need to find a way to create a space for ourselves where we can own our power, be sovereign, um, be as weird as we want, <laughs> you know, be as absolutely weird as we want, where, where we can do all of our weird things, but still somehow be connected to the community. I don't know how to do that on a large scale, but, you know, for me, making a video like this, you know, I know maybe 50 people will see it and maybe 10 people will leave a thumbs up. Um, but for you 10 people that leave a thumbs up, that is fucking awesome because why do I need like a million people or even a hundred people to watch this and resonate with it? If I have 10 people who like this enough to leave a thumbs up, that is amazing. Um, cause think about it. If you like had some kind of like thing in your hometown and like 10 people came to a coffee shop because you're hosting some kind of event and it was like maybe like a book club circle, right? If you got 10 people or like a writer's group, if you got 10 people to show up, that would be awesome. You would have like 10 people, you'd have a little group, do your thing, it'd be great. I kind of see, you know, videos in the same way, you know, <laughs> I don't need tons of people. If I have one person, then that's like a personal reading. That's awesome. So for me, this is just one, this is one way. This is just an example of how we can be ourselves and find a way to engage with a broader community. Okay, and yep, the final outcome of all of this, the Three of Cups. This is absolutely finding your community. This is getting together with your soul family, and it is getting together not really to do anything in particular, although you will be doing things, you will be doing something, but that's not the main motivation, right? This is th this Three of Pentacles. This is the problem card. This is the challenge card. The Three of Pentacles is getting together with your like coworkers to do work. <laughs> that is That mentality is the problem. Three of Cups, this is where you're going. You're transmuting this. You're tempering it, actually. Temperance card. You're tempering this and reaching out to connect with people just for the sheer joy of it, just for the sheer unconditional love. And, you know, if there's nobody in your life that you want to connect with, that's fine. You don't need to connect with people in physical human bodies. You can be connecting with your soul family in your dream time. You can be connecting with any any disembodied being, and there's so many uncountable like trillions of them, right? You can be connecting with literally anybody or just yourself, your parallel selves. There's, you could just connect with yourself. You can be like a, a team of yous. <laughs> so this is where you're going. This is what you're learning to do. And, you know, you can see, I think, yeah, this is, I think this is the same person three times, actually. I talked about connecting with, you know, other versions of yourself before I actually looked at this card. And, um, for what it's worth, my eyesight is actually really bad. So a lot of the time when I'm holding the card, um, for the camera, it's actually too far away for me to see the details. So, uh, yeah. Connecting with other aspects of yourself, connecting with your soul family and just getting, enjoying that connection for the sheer pleasure of it. And I think that is everything. I'm not going to pull any Oracle cards because I am afraid that this reading has been very segmented. I think I talked about different things that aren't attached to each other. Um, so <laughs> thank you so much for sitting through my wandering. Um, I hope your guys' ascension symptoms aren't bothering you too much. I think I'm going to go have a hot bath with some bath salts and it's going to be good. So Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in and connecting with me and just being there, giving me a reason, giving me um, the opportunity to do this. I am actually feeling quite a bit better um, after connecting with your energy and after talking about all these things. Um, I think part of my problem actually was that those really, really, really intense uh, collectives that did with me yesterday. And I think I was like holding on to all of that energy and it was kind of like stewing around and I needed to get it out. And this is this was... This was how I could get it out. So you did me a massive service by existing so that I can, <laughs> could do this video. And that, I guess the one last thing is, yeah, this whole throat chakra thing, the queen uh, or the empress. I think if we don't share, if we don't speak, if we don't speak out, if we don't share our energy, it gets kind of bottled up. And I think that makes our ascension symptoms worse or you, you know, 
it's not good. It's not energetically healthy. I think to just be keeping all the energy for ourselves. We need to share it. We need to get it out. We need to keep it moving and flowing and flowing and flowing. So we all need to find a way to share our energy a little bit more in a way that is comfortable to us, I guess. So once again, <laughs> thank you so much and see you guys later. Bye.